pudding is simply a cake that's been steamed rather than baked, and then it's turned out onto a plate to serve. I'll start by showing you the basics with a classic English sticky toffee pudding recipe. Then I'll move on to something more advanced, lemon souffle cakes, and these have an Asian inspiration to them. After that, you'll be ready to tackle the ultimate in steamed puddings, a festive grand plum pudding. And for something a little extra, I'll show you how to make marzipan fruits to use as a garnish for your plum pudding. But let's start at the beginning with the sticky toffee pudding. This truly is an English classic. The base for a sticky toffee pudding is actually dates. I have a cup of pitted chopped dates. And I'm going to add to that 3 quarters of a cup of tea. You can use an orange pico or English breakfast. And this is going to plump up the dates, so I need to let that sit for a little bit. Half a teaspoon of vanilla. I'll add 3 quarters of a teaspoon of baking soda. Steaming is a very gentle way to cook a cake. And so you need to activate the baking soda before it hits the heat of the oven. So by mixing it in with the dates and the hot tea, it accomplishes that. So I'll let this sit for a few minutes and take care of the cake batter base. I have six tablespoons of room temperature butter, and it's unsalted butter. And I'll add to that three quarters of a cup of sugar. I like that this recipe is simple enough that you can mix it up by hand. All right, now that that's evenly blended, I'll grab a couple eggs, two eggs, but I add them to the recipe one at a time, stirring well after each addition. Next, I'll sift in the dry ingredients. A cup and a third of all-purpose flour and a teaspoon of baking powder. Unlike the baking soda that I had to add to the liquid, the baking powder gets added at the end. So as the cake steams, the baking soda works first to start the pudding rising up, but then the baking powder kicks in a little bit later to keep it rising up. And I stir in the flour just until it's evenly blended. There we go, that's the cake batter base. And as you can see, it's quite thick. But that will change once I add my dates. So I add that all at once. So now the batter's nice and soft and still warm. And I'll pour this into a piping bag to fill. And I've got my pan already set. You've got a large roasting pan, and you set your individual baking dishes into the pan. In this case, I'm using what's called a savarin ring mold. The water circulates around the outside, but also in the center. I like to use the piping bag because it fills the savarin ring molds easily. But if you're baking your steamed puddings in just a ramekin, you can just spoon the batter in. And there we go. Now, they're not quite ready for the oven yet, because, of course, you need to generate the steam through hot boiling water. So I'll pour the water down the side of the pan, and I just watch until it comes up halfway. To capture the steam, I cover the whole pan with foil. The puddings are ready for the oven now. I've preheated it to 350, and they take 30 minutes. In that 30 minutes, the steam is gently maintained by the heat of the oven, and it's the steam that cooks the puddings and at the same time keeps them nice and moist. And there we go. These have spent their 30 minutes in the oven. Lift the far end so the steam escapes away from you. Look how they just fluffed right up. And now I want to take them out of the water bath just to cool for a couple minutes. And now I'll get started on the toffee sauce. And this is a simple hard sauce. It's almost like a cross between a caramel sauce with a little hint of butterscotch. It starts with a quarter cup of butter. And I'll melt that and measure half a cup of dark brown sugar. And I let this start simmering and bubbling up together. Once it starts bubbling, you want to add a quarter cup of whipping cream. And it's up to you if you'd like to use half a cup of lightly toasted walnut pieces, or I'm opting for the raisins. And the last addition is an ounce of brandy. Now I'll just take it off the heat. So that's cool just enough that I can handle it. And just make sure it's loose and I simply turn it out onto a plate. Isn't that pretty? 
With the sovereign ring, I can fill the middle of the pudding with the sauce. And that way, when you cut into it, just watch it spill out. 